All right, I'm going to get started. Um, so, uh, hi, my name is Tim. I'm the interim VP of marketing. Um, if you're in the marketing team or in the executive team or uh, on the sales team, potentially, um, I should warn you, I'm not going to tell you anything new today that you haven't heard already. Uh, in fact, all of my slides that I have um, are stuff that I presented as of December 8, December 9 last year. So I'm trying to catch everybody else up to speed, but don't expect new info. Uh, we're just kind of reiterating a lot of stuff that you should know if you're in one of these three teams. Um, happy to stop for questions along the way. Um, you know, feel free to just put them in the chat. And uh, without further ado, I'm just gonna share my screen if I can, and then uh, try to get started. There we, oh, and I got signed out. So this is gonna be fun. All right. I love how um, you get signed out of Google randomly at the worst possible moment. How's everybody doing today? And they were doing well. All right, should be good. All right. So um, the one kind of key thing to understand about um, our strategy and our marketing strategy in particular, I think, is uh, the relationship between uh, we as a vendor on the right, uh, software developers uh, that we know and love, and then people who buy software. Um, and you know, there's cases where a software developer is a person buying the software, uh, but they tend to be separate functions, separate responsibilities, um, and even more so as companies kind of grow in size. So uh, the traditional model, the old school model, the uh, Oracle model is, you know, uh, you as a vendor, come and you talk to a, a business-centric buyer, you want to indict them, you convince them to buy a license for your software, and then uh, the buyer, you know, the IT people go and turn to their software developers and be like, you know, you're using this, you know, no choice, tough luck, um, here's the software you, you're dealing with. Uh, for a while, I think in like, you know, late 90s, early aughts, you saw the emergence of the opposite model, you know, through open source, people saying, well, there's great software uh, out there, um, you know, software developers are going to, you know, choose to use it. Uh, they're going to go towards the buyers and need a support contract or patches or fixes or professional edition. The buyer is going to listen to their demands and then go towards the vendor and go buy software. And, um, you know, neither of these first two models really worked well. Um, you know, I, I think it's something that works in some extreme cases, uh, depending on your situation, your relationships, but uh, it's not a universal model and it doesn't guarantee you success. Um, so the, the model that seems to be working fairly well and one that we're going to try to use when it comes to marketing is this idea that we as a vendor um, have a direct line of direct responsibility uh, towards software developers and is to influence them in some way or another um, and to also be the recipients of, of their influence in a lot of other ways um, that we're going to try to broadcast the message that um, that you know uh, get lab it out there and you know, let them have a great experience with a great product um, and and try to have the direct relationship with them um, we're going to expect soft developers to kind of promote a conversation um, with uh, IT people, with managers, with, um, you know, even CIOs to, uh, to look into using, deploying, and buying our software. And we're going to try to meet, um, you know, in the middle. We're not going to wait for buyers to come to us. Uh, we're going to kind of be pretty aggressive at reaching out towards the buyer. So this is kind of a very important map, but it should give you the key of answering can everything we're trying to do in marketing. We're not just marketing to software developers, we're, we're marketing to software developers and buyers. Uh, we're not waiting for buyers to come to us, we're gonna be pretty aggressive about reaching out to them. And uh, we also wanna promote some of that in the middle, right? Whenever we can encourage software developers to, to be involved and active in a conversation about deploying or using software, we'll be more successful than our competitors. So, you know, the big difference, I think, compared to what we were doing previously is really introduce this idea of a, a buyer. You know, who's a buyer and uh, why does marketing need to care about the buyer? And uh, again, it's a very key thing. It's probably the biggest difference between what we're trying to do this year and, and, and what we were doing before. And you're probably going to see us spend a lot of time on the buyer. And, and that's mostly just to counterbalance uh, the fact that, you know, we're a pretty advanced company. We're pretty old, we're pretty big. And we really haven't uh, established a, a voice, um, a, a practice in talking to, uh, to buyer uh, people. Uh, we're going to try to make sure that we don't uh, lose our soul and lose our edge. And, and we're going to try to you know, be uh, friendly to developers. Um, it, it is absolutely critical. It's absolutely necessary for us 
uh, to have the upper edge and remain a developer centric operation in a lot of ways. But we need to also connect to the buyer and they'll see us do a, a lot of marketing towards that. And I don't want anybody to kind of overreact about it. It's just necessity of deficiency. We have. Um, you know, you can think about it this way. We go from talking to software developers, and I think we've done a great job of that through our blog posts, through Hacker News, through Twitter, uh, to really talking about software development in general, right? And, uh, and all the people that, that regroups, you know, not just uh, developers, but also, you know, um, your, your integration manager, your DevOps people, but also non-technical people that whose life revolves around software development, like CIOs, for example, or um, IT managers, et cetera, right? So we really need to kind of cover the whole uh, life cycle. And, and this is kind of the switch I think you're going to see us do in tone and voice and content um, in events and, and a lot of other things. Uh, so the buyer, if you're kind of wondering who that person is, because I think we all understand who the, the developer, the technical person is, um, you know, it, it's usually a person that has this kind of title. Um, it changes depending on the size of the company. And, uh, but, you know, it's somebody who has the ability to make a decision or be able to make a purchase or to recommend a purchase, right, for uh, the kind of software that, that we sell with, uh, with GitLab EE and with GitHost and, um, and, and .com, and, you know, as we level up the uh, pricing uh, of .com. And the sweet spot for us, you know, what we really like to, to think about uh, first and foremost when you think about buyers is, is somebody who has a tiny title in a very large company. Because, you know, the, the larger the company, the bigger the opportunity for us. And we're not going to be exclusive about that. That's why you have parents to this on the second point. Uh, you know, we need to, to, to talk and we need to sell to uh, people in any company size. Usually if you aim I, you know, you're going to be able to have good coverage down below as well. So, you know, I think this is kind of uh, the, the shortest summary of who a buyer is and what a person is like. And, and you know, who is that we're going to talk to when you see us? Uh, push out some of those like surveys or white papers or anything else you're going to see us do in the future. Um, our message is going to change a little bit. You know, since we're talking to um, to this kind of buyer persona as well as developers and technical people, we're going to try to uh, find a way to, uh, to to kind of merge these two points right into a single storyline. And we're still going to do the tactical stuff you see us do around. Uh, uh, DevOps around uh, uh, maybe conversational development and other thread that we've explored in the past. But we also need to kind of have a higher positioning for, for GitLab, something that helps us uh, talk to both uh, devs and, and, and talk to buyers. And sometimes you're going to see us you know, have messages that are just about buyers, that are just about answering their needs and their questions. Uh, and so that's going to be very important. You know, what's going to be also very important is we're going to go towards something called um, account-based marketing, ABM at the bottom. And, and ABM really is about kind of, you know, micro-targeting uh, specific um, industries, specific uh, geographical areas, specific companies and accounts, specific people sometimes in those accounts um, with a, an optimized message. You know, instead of saying, uh, GitLab makes software development great, for example. We say, you know, uh, GitLab is great for uh, pharma companies uh, that, that are particularly invested in agriculture or whatever, you know, and, and, and you can kind of do any sort of, of, of customization that way. So you're going to see us, I think, change quite a bit, and you're going to see us explore kind of very deep, dark areas, and you might see uh, communications from us that are really about uh, convincing specific accounts, specific people, um, as opposed to uh, kind of speaking to the broad developer base as we have mostly done in the past. So at a very high level, um, you know, the marketing strategy is really about, you know, first all internalizing and marketing and beyond marketing that both developers and buyers make us successful. We, we cannot be successful just focusing on one of them. Um, that, you know, for, for a short while at least, we're going to really put the, the revenue generating buyers, right, and activity that help us generate revenue at the center of our priorities, um, you're going to see us invest a lot in BDR, invest in lead gen, um, invest in content, product marketing, et cetera. And, and you know, that's just to counterbalance some of the, the great work we've done on the developer side and other marketing side in the past. And uh, you're going to see us kind of still try to win that awareness battle. You know, our biggest problem is, is still going to be that a lot of people haven't heard of GitLab or aren't using GitLab and, and or sure as past success will be to change that. Um, and then the second thing we're going to try to do is, and, and then there's been a problem, uh, you know, internally in uh, inside marketing, outside marketing is kind of really um, iterate much faster and deliver some of the stuff that's expected much faster. And, and I think we've had a lot of good ideas and good requests 
um, and we're going to need to kind of get good at this. And, and so I think that that fourth point is important and, and we generate a lot of questions from people uh, in the company. I think, you know, what I must highlight there is the need for us to focus at the same time. Um, you know, the word is the word that's very important. I underline this, this quickly and underline like what people actually need. And, and there's a difference between what people want and what people need. And I think we've, we've fallen prey quite a bit in marketing in just doing anything that people wanted or suggested. And we've, uh, we've kind of uh, dropped the ball on a lot of stuff that was actually very necessary for a business. So we're going to try to become really, really good at prioritizing what is absolutely helpful for the business and doing it very, very quickly. But you're also going to see us focus and, um, and turn down requests and things that don't actually move the needle and don't, get, don't push marketing forward. So it's going to be a... Uh, a slow process. I want to try to figure out what that feels like. Um, we're going to work on it together, but uh, I think you should expect changes in marketing on that side. So from an org standpoint, all right, low quality uh, PNGs. I don't know if you can still make out the names. I guess, you know, at a high level, um, we, we're still going to have a BDR team. Um, you know, BDR team, uh, you know, going to be managed by chat. We have some uh, hires we're going to make in Q3 and Q4. Um, we're going to look at, um, you know, having a lead gen function that really is about, um, you know, having on one side a really great web operation um, and also great um, field marketing and events operation. Uh, we're going to have uh, product marketing with, with two uh, senior kind of product marketers um, helping us, um, you know, uh, have all the messages, collateral, uh, training, um, enablement, right, that we need to have to have a successful sales team. And then on developer relations, um, uh, you know, we're still going to invest in that. We're still going to have DAs, uh, developer advocates, and community advocates. We're still going to try to do technical content and push that. Um, and uh, we're also going to try to introduce a corporate marketing function that helps us with PR, with analysts, uh, with some of the brand marketing we need to do as we get bigger and, and as we get closer and closer to an IPO, and to also manage our communications. Uh, across, you know, blog, Twitter, et cetera, right? And, uh, and that will also encompass uh, design, I think, naturally. So uh, at a high level, this is kind of where we expect to end up in 2017. You know, there might be changes there, but uh, that's kind of what that looks like. Um, the, you know, the, the idealized structure looks like to um, meet the need that we have with this new strategy. I'm going to shut up there and take questions, uh, stop my screen share probably, and then see if anybody has asked anything in the chat. All right. Um, so Erica is asking if this is recorded. I think so. Um, all right. So that's perfect. Otherwise, I'll share the slides. And there are no questions. All right. I have nothing else to say unless there are questions. <laughs> we move this up ahead in, in a slightly different format than usual for the functional updates, because I think there are um, comments about this and, and people that aren't aware of kind of a new marketing strategy and new marketing direction. So we wanted to um, move that up. Um, but if there's no questions, I guess we can end early. <laughs> all right, I'll wait a couple more minutes. It's all relatively straightforward, really, um, but I'm always happy to chat about it. Uh, Jim is asking, what do you think about our pricing? Um, we don't charge enough money. <laughs> for what we what we offer um and i don't mean that from a quality standpoint a product standpoint um although that's probably true too I, I just i just think we need to really lift our acv um to be able to um ipo and so uh that, that's my honest answer even though it has nothing to do with what i just presented but uh I think we deliver a lot of value and we should also be able to charge more for, for what we do with the current product we have. So, I don't know. What else do we have? All right, well, we're always happy to uh, take questions in the marketing channel, I guess. 
if you have any questions or you can DM me on Slack, um, happy to chat, happy to answer anything you need to know. And I think that's going to be about it. All right. Have a good day, everybody.